Hi everyone, it's time to open up my March Book of the Month Club. As you can see, this is a, another thick box. I got two books this month. Of course, yeah, my 2BR list is just kind of out of control, but I finally made it up to page 20 hmm? from the book that I started like, what, four weeks ago? Yeah, I'm, I'm moving on at rapid speed here. But anyway, I'm excited to be bringing this to you, so I hope that you stick around and join me. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to have you guys stop in and visit and spend a few minutes of your day with me. Today we're going to be doing my March unboxing of the Book of the Month Club, which is going to put me up to date, not up to date with my reading or anything, but up to date with my unboxing of my Book of the Month Club. Yeah, oh, what a great feeling. But anyway, just a, a word of advice, never mix a wine unboxing and tasting and then try to do another video after i'm trying it but i don't think it's going well but anyway we're gonna we're gonna give it our best shot because i figured i'm set up here i got the candles lit i got i'm dressed up i got my fascinator on so let's just go with it Alrighty. so yeah you're probably going to see this one before i do the uh, wine diaries episode because i usually try to do those like on a friday or something so i'm kind of trying to do things on the weekends so that on the week days um i don't have to to work for like 10 12 14 hours a day and then try to do a video and then try to piece things together and do things and i think that's just working out for me to try to do some videos on the weekend and then just schedule them to upload during the week and that way during the week after work I can just kind of go at my own pace and um and just kind of watch videos and do some commenting and I think that saves a little bit of energy for me so trying this out this is going to be my second week trying it this way so I'm hoping it go it's going oh well going well like I said don't mix wine tasting and then try to do another video i am so confused right now because i just did this um the tales of the three mailbacks and it when i finished the video i like the cheaper wine best best <laughs> it's just not a good idea i don't even know if i'm going to post this but anyway i finished my steak bites and so then i finished the glasses that i had already poured so i finished this one which was the most expensive then i went to finish the glass that i had the one that was in the middle and then the one that was the least expensive which was the one that i liked the best when i finished the video of the tale of three real mailbags but now I, it's between these two i'm so confused so i'm gonna have to do another taste test when nobody's watching but anyway we're gonna get into the book of the month club i'm gonna try to get into the book of the month club so anyway here it is and I'll leave a link below and I'm not sure how the link works I know some people when they've used my link they said they got their first book for five dollars other people said their first book using my link was nine dollars so I don't know if that maybe book of the month club maybe they do different promotions and sometimes it's nine and sometimes it's five but anyway it's still a little bit less um, that you get your first book a little bit cheaper um, after that, it's $14.99 a month for your book. Then you get free credits, and I've gotten credits for free books when people have used my link. But then all of a sudden, I get free credits, and I have no idea why, because mm, it doesn't tell me that someone used my link. So it doesn't take too much to confuse me, and that's with or without one. Alrighty, so March was the first one that they came up and changed it so that instead of being able to choose from five books, you got to choose from seven yeah so that made it a little harder for me but i think i did okay and then i think because i've been in it for a while i'm now a member of the bff so maybe it's the book of the month club best friends forever so they sent me this free tote this month so it's a nice canvas tote place to hold your book here nice inside and book of the month in the back so that's really nice so before we get to the two books that i chose so let me dump them out of here and this this was a lot easier than it was the last time maybe i should have a drink every time but anyway you've got great taste they always send you a bookmark as well so i'll tell you a little bit about the books that i didn't pick first 
So the first one, and again, this one was, you know, because there were seven books this month, they had a couple of different categories. So this first one, and I'm probably not going to do the whole thing like I did last time just to save a little bit of time. So I'll just give a little bit of each book. So the first one was called, it was a fantasy book, and it was called The Cut. Cartographers by Peng Shepherd, and the quick take is when her father turns up dead in the New York Public Library, a disgraced map maker has to find her true north as soon as possible. And what is the purpose of a map? Nell Young's whole life and greatest passion is cartography. Her father, Dr. Daniel Young, is a legend in the field and Nell's personal hero but she hasn't seen or spoken to him since he cruelly fired her and destroyed her reputation over an argument over a old, cheap gas station highway map. Remember those maps that you used to get and you'd go places and you, you could never fold them as nice as you got them and you used to kind of highlight your map and yeah, it was a lot of fun in those days. But anyway, when Dr. Young is found dead in his office at the New York Public Library with a very seemingly worthless map hidden in his desk. Nell can't resist investigating. To her surprise, she soon discovers that the map is incredibly valuable and also exceedingly rare. In fact, she may now have the only copy left in existence because a mysterious collector has been hunting down and destroying every last one, along with anyone who gets in their way. But why? I know that one doesn't, that one sounds good. I can't believe I didn't pick this one. That one sounds really, really good. The other one that I didn't pick was uh, The Verifiers. It was a debut author, author by Jane Peck. Again, don't drink wine <laughs> and then expect to do a, a video with that. So, yeah. So, anyway. They verifiers. So the quick take, it's a family drama, dating app woes, and artificial intelligence. I'm going to start that one over again because this one, this one sounds like it could be fun to say. Quick take, it's a family drama, dating app woes, and artificial intelligence. Oh my! Yeah, that was much better, wasn't it? So the witty debut novel has something for everyone. The synopsis. Introducing a sharp-witted heroine for the 21st century, a new amateur sleuth exploring the landscape, both physical and virtual, of New York, and a debut novel about love, technology, and murder. Claudia Lynn is used to disregarding her fractious family's model minority expectations. She has no interest in finding either a conventional career or a nice Chinese boy. She's also used to keeping secrets from them, such as she prefers girls, and that she's only been stealth recruited by Veracity, referrals only online dating detective agency. A lifelong mystery reader who wrote her senior the thesis on Jane Austen, Claudia believed she's landed the ideal job, but when a client goes missing, Claudia breaks protocol to investigate and it covers a maelstrom of personal and corporate deceit. Part literary, literary, again the wine, part literary mystery, part family history, The Verifiers is a clever and incisive examination of how technology shapes our choices and the nature of romance in the digital age. Alrighty, the next one was a contemporary fiction, and it's called The Unseekable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. The quick take is, take a cruise with your estranged dad, they said. It'll be fun, not at all awkward. It'll be a bonding experience, they said. Alrighty, so the synopsis is, Greta James' mediator, meteoric rise to indie stardom and was hard won. Before she graced magazine covers and sold out venues, she spent her girlhood strumming her guitar in the family garage. Her first fan was her mother, Helen, whose face shone brightly in dusty downtown bars when she got her start. 
but not everyone encouraged Greta to follow her dreams. While many daydream about a crowd chanting their names, her father Conrad sees only a precarious life ahead for his daughter. Greta has spent her life trying to prove him wrong, but three months after Helen's sudden death and weeks before the launch of her high stakes so sophomore album, Greta has an onstage meltdown and that goes viral, attempting to outrun the humiliation and heartbreak she reluctantly agrees to accompany her father on a week-long Alaskan cruise, the very one that her parents booked to celebrate their 40th anniversary. This could be the James family last chance to heal old wounds and will prove to be a voyage of discovery for them as well. As for Ben Wilder, a historian also struggling with a major upheaval in his life, Ben is on board to lecture about Jack London's The Call of the Wild, the adventure story Greta's mother adored. And he captures Greta's attention after her streak of dater hanging ons. As Greta works to build up her confidence in, in heel, and Von Ben confronts his uncertain future, they must rely on each other to make sense of life's difficult choices. In the end, Greta must make the most challenging decision of all, to listen to the song within her or make peace with the ones who love her. It sounds like it could be a fun little tearjerker. Next, it's a romance and it's called The Taming of the Shrew. It's remixed and remade and it's a, I don't write, I didn't write down the uh, title on that one, I'm sorry. But it's The Taming of the Shrew, remixed and remade. It can, I'm gonna have to start that over. It's a romance, the quick take, The Taming of the Shrew, remixed and remade. Can a love adverse TV doctor? Oh my gosh, what the heck is wrong with me? Cheers, everyone. It's gonna make it all better, right? Okay, take 500. Romance. Quick take. The Taming of the Shrew. Remixed and remade. Can a love adverse TV doctor and a hopeless romantic spark an unlikely romance? Synopsis. Karina Mann dreams of having a love story like her parents, but she prefers restoring her classic car to swiping right on dating apps. When her father announces he's selling her mother's home, Karina makes a deal with him. He'll gift her the house if she can get engaged in four months. Her search for her soulmate becomes impossible when her argument with Dr. Prem Verma, host of the Dr. Dilk show, goes viral. Now the only man in her life is the one she doesn't want. <sighs> Dr. Prem Verma, is dedicated to building a local community health center, but he needs to get donors with deep pockets. The Dr. Dill show was doing just that until his argument with Karina went viral and he's left short changed. That's when Karina's meddling aunties presented him with a solution. Convince Karina he's her soulmate and they'll fund his clinic. Even though they have conflicting views on love, matches, and arranged matches, the more time Prem spends with Karina, the more he begins to believe she's the woman he wants to spend the rest of his life with. But for Prem and Karina to find their happily ever after, they must admit that hate has turned to fate. Alrighty, so the next one is a true crime and I love true crime stories. I love listening to um, it's Bailey Sarian on YouTube. She does like a murder mystery makeup Mondays, Josh. I, yeah, yeah, she's got just name fun. But anyway, she's really fun and her makeup looks are amazing. She also does like Black History Months, which are really fun to listen to too. And uh, there's another one, Chris 
Uh, I'm going to forget her name. Kristen Daniels or something like that. She's also, she's got an English accent. And so she does the same thing where she puts on her makeup. And then she talks about uh, an old murder case or something like that. And yeah, those, those girls are so interesting. And a lot of times I listen to them at work when I don't have YouTube on. I just have it on the background so I don't see what they're doing. All of a sudden I got to click back to see what the makeup looks, looks like. Yeah, I love true crime. And all oh, the casual criminalist. I love him. He's also got like an accent and yeah he's got sarcastic deep kind of black humor i guess you'd say when he's describing these murder cases love 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 them so anyway back to the book true crime tell me everything by erica cruz quick take it's an unforgettable thrilling look at the life of a private investigator working to uncover evidence for a historic case pat memoir memoir and pot literary true crime tell me everything is a mesmerizing story of a landmark sexual assault investigation and the female private investigator who helped crack it open erica cruz was one of those faces i don't know why i'm telling you this people say spilling confessions in fall 2002 erica accepts a new contract job investigating lawsuits as a private investigator. The role seems perfect for her, but she quickly realizes she has no idea what she's doing. Then a lawyer named Grayson assigns her to investigate a sexual assault. A college student who was attacked by football players and recruits at a party earlier that year. Erica knows that she should turn this assignment down. Her own history with sexual violence makes it all too personal, but she takes the job anyway. Inspired by Grace's conviction that she could help change things forever, and maybe she could too. Over the next five years, Erica learns everything she can learn about PI techniques, tracking down witnesses and investigating a culture of sexual assault and harassment ingrained in the Universal's football program. But as the investigation grows into a national scandal and historic civil rights case, Erica finds herself increasingly consumed. When the case and her life both implode at the same time, Erica must figure out how to help the case without losing herself. And I'm ready to do the two books that I picked, but I'm losing my voice, so I will be back in a few minutes. Sorry about that. I'm still at the point where I need to take a, a few breaks here and there, and um, it just reminds me when it mentioned Sherry from uh, Beauty Is You. She's got a channel. She's an awesome, sweet lady. She's from Crystal River, Florida, where my um, grandparents used to have a glass bottom boat business years and years ago but anyway she's got double pneumonia and I know she's going through uh, breathing issues and catching her breath too but uh, you know double pneumonia is pretty pretty serious so I hope that you guys reach out to Sherry at Beauty Is You I will link her below she started a new channel too um, thinking pause something in me or something so I will leave both channels below I hope that you check Sherry out say some prayers for her for a speedy recovery but also okay getting back to the book so i just wanted to say i i still need to take breaks and sherry i watched one of her videos yesterday where she cleaned out a whole porch or whatever and then she needed to rest it's like good god woman take your take your time you need to heal all righty enough said prayers for sherry so anyway before i get into um finishing and choose telling you the books that I chose. I wanted to also mention Kelly from Kelly's Unboxing Addiction. She had done um, a video the other day that I caught and uh, she was uh, doing, it was a book review that um, she had some books and she had mentioned that she had got um, like a little pad uh, journal, book journal from Amazon. So I said, you know, that's really a good idea. So I went on Amazon too and I got one and yeah, because, you know, it reminds me of years and years ago when we got our first VCR and do you guys remember back in the 70s when VCRs or maybe it was early 80s um, 
and you had you got like a lifetime subscription to be able to rent movies but it was like 350 dollars for the club and then you still had to pay like 9.99 to get videos yeah it was crazy expensive and then all of a sudden like 10 years later it was free you know they can't give them away but anyway rick whenever i sent him to pick out a video hands down every time he came back with the same video and we would go through this argument every time you we've watched that a million times you don't even like it he says oh no i've never seen this before yeah and then you'd get like three quarters into it and you were just getting into it and then he'd pop it out of the vcr he says yeah you're right i've watched this before i hate this movie and by then you're interested and you want to you want to finish it but it was like every time men they're crazy don't send them to the video store to pick up videos so anyway i just thought that was a good idea from kelly's unboxing and i'll link her below as well but anyway so the one i picked and it's just a paperback just one more chapter yeah and so it just gives you a place to write down the different books that you've read maybe do some reviews on them so you can kind of later on look back and see what was your favorite books and what you read i haven't started filling it out yet but yeah, I just thought that was a good idea. So thanks, Kelly, from Kelly's Unboxing Addiction. All right. So, yeah, so we're going to get back into this. I'm going to have another sip of wine. And it got me thinking when I did my steak tonight, um, and I, I made it with a, the horseradish dipping sauce, even though I had it, like, marinating for a couple of days and something. And when we first moved to Forest Lake in Minnesota from Rhode Island, we lived in Massachusetts for years as well. But there was a golf course restaurant called Vanelli's. And it was, it was kind of like an upscale place at the time. Since then, it's changed hands like 20 times or whatever. And now it's like a sports bra. Not a bra. <laughs> a wine. Sports bra. But anyway, it was a nice restaurant. It was called Vanelli's back then. And tablecloths and just nice crystal and china and everything. And um, so we wanted the prime rib. And um, if they do the prime rib different there. So, and a lot of places do out here too, that it's grilled. It's not like down in an oven where they grill it on the grill. And it's all served with horseradish sauce. And so when we ordered, I said, did you guys, can you do a Bernays sauce? Because we always, growing up in New England, we always had it with Bernays sauce. And so she said, yeah, I don't know what that is, but I'll ask the chef. So the chef came out to see us. And he says, are you guys from Boston? And we're like, <laughs> no <laughs> so anyway he says well i'll tell you what i will make the bernay sauce for you but you have to promise to try it with the horseradish and yeah horseradish, it was so good and yeah so now even though when i do the steak bites i just love it with horseradish sauce so i just had to mention that because if you were thinking yeah that was weird having horseradish sauce on my steak it's, it really is good it makes your nose run but it's really really good all righty getting back to the books I chose. So these are the ones I picked. So the first one that I picked here is called The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. So anyway, this one's back to a thriller. You know how I was getting into fantasy, but I could not resist this. So The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. So it's a perfect read for every true crime fan who suspected they might just get to the bottom of things better than the pros. In 1977, Claire Lake, Oregon was shaken by the Lady Killer murders. Two men, seemingly random, were murdered with the same gun. And with strange notes left behind, Beth Greer was the perfect suspect. A rich, eccentric 23-year-old woman seen fleeing one of the crimes. But she was acquitted and she retreated to the isolation of her mansion. Oregon, 2017. Shay Collins is a receptionist, but by night she runs a true crime website, The Book of Cold Cases, a passion fueled by the attempted abduction she escaped as a child. When she meets Beth by chance, Shay asks her for an interview. To Shay's surprise, Beth says yes. They meet regularly at Beth's mansion, though Shay is never comfortable there. Items move when she's not looking, and she could swear she's seen a girl outside the window. The allure of learning the truth 
about the case from the smart drumming Beth is too much to resist. But even as they grow closer, Shay senses something isn't right. Is she making friends with a manipulative murderer? Or are there dangers lurking in the distance of the gray house? I know. I know. Doesn't that sound good? Okay, so then the second one I got is by Lucy Foley. And it's The Paris Apartment. And I happen to be reading one of Lucy Foley's book now, though it's, I think I'm on week four and I'm on page 20, called The Guest List, which is a really good book. And I just got to a good part the other night and I just fell asleep. Uh, yeah, but it's, yeah, I'm liking it so far. Alrighty, so this one is another mystery. So it's The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Sometimes you visit the City of Lights and the vibe is just off. You know, you know what I mean? Looking at you, neighbors. So it's Jess needs a fresh start. She's broke and alone, and she's left. I hate it when I do that. Alrighty. Cheers. That makes everything better. So Jess needs a fresh start. She's broke and alone, and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. Her half-brother, Ben, didn't sound thrilled when she asked, asked if she could crash with him for a bit, but he didn't say no. So, surely, everything will look better in Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment. Could Ben really have afforded this? And he's not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation and the more questions she has. Ben's neighbors are an eccentric bunch and not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like it's Ben's future that's in question. The socialite, the nice guy, the alcoholic, the girl on the verge, the concierge, Everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. Okay, so those are the two books I picked. I know this has been a crazy, crazy long video, so I apologize for that. But anyway, if you have read any of the books I've mentioned, I would love to hear your comments on them. No spoilers, please. And if it's something that I should add to my QBR list, and if you have read either one of these. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them as well. So anyway, thanks so much for spending time with me. I appreciate it more than you know. And you guys just mean the world to me. I appreciate you guys so much. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys go out and have a great rest of the week. And I have got a dilemma. I have got to figure out what line on the tail of the Meldex that I like the best. I cannot tell. And is it rude to go to someone's house with three open bottles of wine and help them decide? These are the questions. I'm going to ponder them all night long. So anyway, love you guys. Bye-bye. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.